Intrepid time travelers, today we bring you one of humanity's most transformative stories. What event changed Europe forever, marking the end of an era and the beginning of another? Get ready as we journey to the heart of the French Revolution, a political, social, and ideological movement that overthrew monarchical absolutism, proclaimed human rights, and opened the doors to republicanism. It was the spark that ignited future revolutionary movements worldwide. But how did it all begin? To understand we must delve into the 18th century, a time of radical changes in France fueled by the intellectual movement of the Enlightenment. Thinkers championed reason, liberty, and equality, challenging the idea that kings ruled by divine right. Additionally, the growing strength of the bourgeoisie, powered by industrial and commercial advances began to shake the nobility's dominance. The system was on the brink of collapse, and revolution was inevitable. Don't miss this story that not only changed France but also redefined the world as we know it. Hit play and join us on this epic journey through time. What happens when a society is on the verge of collapse? In the 1780s France, the bourgeoisie, weary of paying high taxes and lacking the privileges of the nobility and clergy, began to realize their power. This coincided with a severe agricultural crisis, which brought hunger and widespread discontent. The result, a furious population, low wages and a political system blatantly favoring the privileged. The Enlightenment's ideas were like fuel to the fire equality reason and freedom began to challenge the divine right of kings. The crisis reached its peak under Louis XVI's reign, exposing the traditional political system during the Estates General of 1789. These estates comprised three groups, the nobility, with 270 representatives, the clergy, with 291 representatives, and the third estate, with 578 representatives, mostly from the bourgeoisie. On May 5, 1789, the third estate, led by revolutionary voices, proposed limiting royal power and reforming the monarchy. Despite initial resistance, the clergyman Emmanuel Joseph convinced the lower clergy and some nobility to join their demands. Thus, the National Assembly was born, officially declared on June 17, 1789, a movement that would not only change France but shake the entire world. How did this rebellion transform human history? Louis XVI tried to stop the revolution by dissolving the Estates General but the National Assembly stood firm. They took refuge in the tennis court and vowed not to separate until drafting a constitution. This pivotal event, known as the Tennis Court Oath, marked a point of no return in the fight for democracy. The king's response was disastrous. He sent troops to suppress the assembly and dismissed Jacques Necker, a beloved minister. This only fueled the people's anger, culminating on July 14, 1789, in the historic storming of the Bastille. This act of rebellion, celebrated today as France's National Day, symbolized the end of the Ancien Regime and the dawn of a new era but the revolution didn't stop there. On August 4, 1789, the National Constituent Assembly abolished tithes and feudalism, stripping the nobility and clergy of their privileges. The decisive moment came on August 26, 1789, with the proclamation of the Declaration of the Rights of Man and of the Citizen, a revolutionary manifesto that laid the foundation for modern liberty and equality. Yet hunger and misery still plagued the people. On October 5 to 6, thousands marched to Versailles, demanding reforms and food forcing the king and his family to relocate to the Tuileries Palace in Paris. Finally, in 1791, the Constituent Assembly drafted France's first constitution, establishing the separation of powers and limiting royal authority. How did this story end? Did the people triumph, or did tensions continue to escalate? By this point, Louis XVI was no longer the all-powerful monarch of old. With his authority divided among a legislative assembly, independent judges, and his own weakened executive power, he attempted to flee to Austria to join other absolutist monarchs and suppress the revolutionary movements. But his escape ended in disaster. The royal family was captured in Varenne and escorted back to Paris, sparking widespread outrage that sealed the monarchy's fate. On September 30, 1791, the National Constituent Assembly dissolved, making way for the Legislative Assembly. 
From this emerged the first organized political movements, precursors to modern political parties. First, the Girondins, advocates for a constitutional monarchy and elitist suffrage, excluding commoners and women. Their leader was Jacques-Pierre Brissot. Second, the Jacobins radical republicans led by Robespierre seeking a strong state based on popular sovereignty and universal suffrage. And third, the Cordeliers, even more extreme, led by Jean-Paul Marat and Georges Jacques Danton, they called for a republic rooted in social justice and equal rights. France became a powder keg, with clashing ideologies stirring the masses. The boiling point came on August 10, 1792, when a popular insurrection stormed the Tuileries Palace. The king was arrested and suspended from his duties, marking the monarchy's definitive collapse. How did this conflict between revolutionaries end? What role did these groups play in shaping France and the world? The execution of Louis XVI in 1793 marked a turning point. The news spread like wildfire across Europe, uniting monarchical powers in a coalition led by Austria and Prussia against revolutionary France. Amid this crisis, the Jacobins, with the support of the lower classes, seized control. Under Robespierre's leadership, the First Republic was born with the adoption of the Constitution of 1793. But absolute power brought the reign of terror. At least 10,000 people were executed on charges of counter-revolutionary activities. Fear gripped France until 1794, when growing discontent led to the Jacobins losing support. Robespierre and his allies were arrested and executed in what became known as the Thermidorian Reaction. In response, the White Terror emerged, a period of repression against the Jacobins lasting until 1795. A new constitution brought the Directory, an executive body of five members, but internal struggles between monarchists and Jacobins persisted. In 1799, everything changed with a coup led by an ambitious young military officer, Napoleon Bonaparte. This event marked the end of the French Revolution and the beginning of the Consulate, a centralized government that restored relations with the Church and paved the way for Napoleon to become Emperor. Global impact of the revolution, politically, it toppled the Ancien Regime, inspiring republican movements across Europe and Latin America, socially, it proclaimed the rights of man, separated church and state, and reduced noble and clerical privileges, economically, it fostered the triumph of modern capitalism, ironies of history, what began as a fight for a republic ended with a new imperial government under Napoleon, who transformed France into a European power and erased the Holy Roman Empire from the map. Want to know how Napoleon attempted to conquer the world? Check out this suggested video. Hello Time Voyagers friends. If you enjoyed the content, please take a moment to give it a thumbs up and subscribe. Your support means the world to us and helps us continue creating exciting videos. Don't forget to follow us on our social media channels, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. We genuinely welcome your comments and love hearing your thoughts. A big hug to all our followers and a heartfelt thank you to our troops and officials for their invaluable support. We appreciate you being here.